What's up guys, Rakowski here. Welcome back to another video. You can see Don Lothario here going into his condo, so you know what that means. That's right, we're going to be playing Pleasant View, but we're not playing the Pleasant View from The Sims 2 that we know and love. In fact, this may even be a little better. This is Pleasant View in The Sims 3. As we can see, the game starts with two notifications right away that Skip Broke has drowned and Darlene Dreamer has tragically burned to death. So we get those deaths right out of the way in the lore, but I want to talk a little bit about the world before we begin. This world was made by Cindy, also known as Pleasant Sims, and by Caleb, also known as Play Sims. They joined forces and recreated Pleasant View, in my opinion, perfectly. We have the condo district here, which is my favorite district. Don Lothario has his condo here. The Calientes are over here. Dustin Broke is here with Bo for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on there. I've already let it play for about an hour, so maybe they're just visiting. But if we move over here to the trailers, we'll see Brandy Broke's house. It's complete with the pool, the pink siding, the little garden, like literally everything tile for tile, as far as I can see, is perfect. And over here, we have the goth mansion. I bet in the back it has wedding stuff. Yes, it certainly does. So we're getting, we're definitely going to get ready for that. And we have the pleasant house over here. It's just stunning. We can see Mary Sue out here in her business power suit, probably getting ready for work. Actually, it's 9.02 on a Sunday. Maybe she's getting ready for church or something else instead. And of course, we have all the things that we need in The Sims 3. Like we have a city hall over here. I added a festival grounds park. So then that way we would have somewhere to go for the season and stuff uh there's all the other houses that are not occupied which i know and love i love this house this is just gorgeous this must have taken forever to recreate and then we have the police station there's like uh, the science center is up here we have the athletic stadium we have a business we have grocery store everything that we possibly need but this is not supposed to be a review of the world. Let's just give it a 10 out of 10 and let's just jump in and start playing. I've decided I'm just going to go with the original scripted events order, even though there's not scripted events in The Sims 3. I think for the most part, we're pretty capable of recreating them. Oh my God, Don went right in and turned on the music. That's exactly what he does in The Sims 2. That's so funny. Since The Sims 3 is an open world and we have story progression enabled, we don't actually have to go around and play every single household to make things progress. So I just made the lifespans a little bit longer and I figure we'll just kind of rotate around and play who we want to because there's definitely some families in Pleasant View that I prefer playing more than others. I think it's best to just do the Sim introductions as we play them. So Don we can see is flirty, he's a slob, a great kisser, he has commitment issues, and he is athletic. And that suits him to a T. And we can see he's in the medical career already, just like he is in The Sims 2. And he's doing well for a promotion, except maybe he could use a little more logic. He doesn't have a chess table or anything. So we'll see if he rolls the want to buy one and improve, but he may just be into the ladies. So far, he wants to learn the athletic skill. He wants to take a class in the athletic skill and join the sports career. Maybe he doesn't want to be a doctor. Well, I guess we'll see what's going on. The first thing I want to do is I want to call up Nina because I know she's going to be an easy lay. Oh my God, did you see that? Don was actually thinking about marriage after he called Nina. That's so funny. I guess we'll have to see what story progression does with that because I'm not doing that. Oh, he wants to meet someone new as well. That'll be good for him because I think he has four loves already. Yes, he's in love with Kaylin. He has Dina, who's just an interest at this point. Nina, who is at the door, so we will answer it. And Cassandra, who of course he's due to marry tomorrow. So I guess we'll see how that goes as well. Oh good, so right off the bat they have hearts flying over their heads, so that means they're pretty much ready to get down to business. I'm just gonna have her do a kiss with him just, just to get started, and we'll have to pop upstairs and decide where we wanna do the woohoo. Since they already know each other, I'm gonna have Nina just join him in the hot tub. I think that's an appropriate place for somebody who you're already having a romantic relationship with. Don rolled the want to woohoo with Nina, and his cell phone is ringing, so I'm just gonna click X on that, because I think realistically you would not answer your cell phone in this situation. So it looks like Don is getting his wish, but there is one thing I should mention that I do 
do have the woohooer mod enabled so that way every time that a sim woohoos it's risky and there is a small chance that they will make a baby so hopefully that doesn't happen on our first go i don't know how i feel about these two being the first ones to have a baby in pleasant view i was hoping more for a family sim like cassandra or brandy and as we can see nina is strutting her way home so before she gets there i think it'll be strategic to try and call her sister dina over so Dina is not as into Dawn as Nina is, but we discovered that she's with Mortimer. That's not going to matter too much to us, I don't think. So I'm just going to start giving a few romantic interactions to maybe win her over. Well, that didn't take long. Apparently Dawn is being very alluring. So we're going to just woohoo with Dina right away. Get that out of the way. It's getting a little bit late too. It's already 6 p.m. So I'd like to kind of get it over with so we can move on to some other Sims too. So Don and Nina are getting their first woohoo on, starting off a wonderful problematic relationship. So that's about all I want to do with Don for the moment. So let's pop over and see what the goth family's up to. Next up, here we are at the goth mansion. And as we can see, it's pouring rain and it's sunset. So I think that's very appropriate for what's going to happen next. Actually, we're going to keep it the day before Cassandra's wedding. We'll let disaster ensue at a later time. I'm going to have everybody come home. They seem to be out and about around town. Where's Cassandra? Oh my God, she's visiting Darren Dreamer. That's so great. Great, I love it. So let's get the introductions out of the way. We have Mortimer here. He is a technophobe. He loves the outdoors. He's a genius, a bookworm, and is handy, and is getting ready to go to bed in Alexander's room. I guess we'll have to figure out bed soon. Cassandra's already in bed in the proper room. She is shy, a bookworm, family-oriented, handy and a hopeless romantic and as we know her lifetime wish is to be surrounded by family raise five children from babies to teenagers so i really hope we can do that for her mortimer's lifetime wish i forgot to mention he was to become a creature robot crossbreeder and he's already achieved that because he reached the top of his career before he retired and alexander goth is getting the big bed to himself because his dad took his bed so far he's a loner clumsy and a genius so we'll have to see what other traits he gets as he ages up if we spend a lot of time with him then we can definitely choose his trait but even if i get to choose traits i usually don't i like to inherit a trait from a family member or something if i get to choose or if i'm not a good parent then they just end up with whatever they get we're just going to have them sleep through the night so they can get a good start to their day tomorrow for Cassandra's wedding. I've been keeping an eye on the story progression, but nothing too crazy. Like we can see Dirk got a job at the grocery store. Dustin got a job at the supermarket, which I guess are different things. But anyway, my point is, is that, you know, nobody's cheated on anybody. No marriages have broken up. Nobody's died. Well, except for, you know, Skip and whatever. But other than that, nobody's died. Cassandra's getting up. She's up nice and early for her wedding. It looks Looks like she's going to start the day by going to the bathroom, of course. That's how I start my day anyway. And I guess we may as well decide what she's going to wear. I like to redress my Sims for special occasions. And I think Cassandra Goth's wedding is almost special enough to do that. Yeah, I think it is. Why don't we just go into create a Sim and figure that out? Oh, never mind. I don't have to because, of course, Cindy and Caleb made this world, so the Sims are dressed properly. So her formal outfit for her wedding is exactly what I would choose for her wedding dress. Oh, John and Jennifer Burb just got a sweet one. They sure make a lovely couple. Jennifer Burb and John Burb continue to be inseparable, it appears, holding hands on the boardwalk the other day. Let's have Cassandra get her wedding started, at least start to, start to plan for it. You know, it is the day of, so we may as well get started. Who should we? invite well we're definitely going to invite don lothario because that'll just be you know unusual if we don't and maybe not the calientes i don't think cassandra would invite the calientes i could see her maybe inviting the pleasants and the oldies by association not their maid kaylin langerak especially since he's having sex with her husband uh darren dreamer why not i think that they're good friends and there's a spark between them but you know like for civilized people like darren and cassandra they would i think try to try to make it make it as 
amicable as possible. Oh, Cassandra just rolled the want to get married. We're going to lock that in for her. We're also going to lock in, throw a great party, and maybe we'll lock in visit Al-Samara, Egypt. Because if she wants to go on vacation, like a honeymoon after her wedding, I think that makes a lot of sense. I usually don't do vacations, but I will for special occasions like this. Okay, well, Cassandra's wedding day is starting off not the best because it's raining still. So we're just going to have our meal inside to start off the wedding and hopefully the rain will let up soon. I could cheat it to stop, I suppose, but I don't really want to do that. I figure if it does rain, it's kind of like a good indicator of the way the rest of her life is going to be with Dawn. Oh, they're eating outside in their gowns anyway, and they're eating at separate tables. Brandy Broke has come over to congratulate Dawn, it looks like, while eating her turkey dinner. Well, they're soaking wet, but everybody's outside and they're here to see the happy couple tie the knot finally. But Don didn't get cold feet and it looks like he's slipping the ring on Cassandra's finger, solidifying their holy union. Okay, now it's time to sort out the move. So I think for sure we're going to have Dawn move in with Cassandra because we're going to have, hopefully Mortimer's going to marry Dina soon and we can just have him move in with her and just make a little bedroom for Alexander or something. Mary Sue, you call that a party? Whatever, I'm leaving. Well, it was a crappy wedding. It is going to be a crappy marriage too. Don't worry, Mary Sue. It's going to be just as unhappy as yours. Okay, why don't we switch households to the Calientes? So here we are at the Caliente house and Dina has just gotten off of work. She's on her way home shortly. We can see the yellow and red, the colors of the sisters bleeding through the windows there. I love their condo. I'm so excited to kind of get started with this one. I love the tile in this kitchen. This tile is like my favorite Sims 1 tile and I love that they used it in one of the most iconic families. Well, we may as well introduce Dina. She is a gold digger, as we know and love. She is a couch potato, a slob, a mooch, childish, and charismatic. We may as well go through some of her wants. She wants to buy a video game system. She wants to join political career. And she also wants to invite a sim over. And I think I already have an idea as to which one we should do. So why don't we give Mortimer a call? I know he's had a big day because his daughter just got married, but... We got to keep things moving, especially for Dina, because she's not wasting any time. She wants the money and she wants it now. Oh my God, hurry up. It's pouring rain. Why don't you get Mortimer inside the house? Oh, Mortimer's freaking out over the TV because he's a technophobe. Oh, well, why don't we get started? I usually like to do things a little bit differently with Mortimer and Dina. I like to have them woohoo almost right away. Okay, so Mortimer and Dina were both able to get into the bed successfully, and they're going in for maybe not their first woohoo, but the first woohoo that we're going to witness. So I think Dina has a 10 or 15% chance. I forget which setting I chose, but uh, she has a 10 or 15% chance of getting pregnant from this unprotected woohoo. She's not intending to have a baby, but as we know in real life, not every baby is planned. I also feel it's very realistic that Dina may be using her sexuality to manipulate Mortimer into loving her, but I guess who really knows? But she's definitely at the point where she wants to propose a wedding. Oh no, Mortimer said no! Oh, I tried my very best. Oh no. Well, I like to just kind of play the way the game is kind of pushing me. So maybe this is not the time or the place for them. So maybe in our game, they're not getting married right away. That's fine, because Nina's going to be home soon. I'm just going to just tell Mortimer to leave then. If he doesn't want to be with me, then, you know, he can just go home as far as I'm concerned. Oh, and of course, now he's trying to kiss me. It's like, this is exactly what happens to me in real life. Bye. Well, Nina's home from work. I was planning on moving her into her own place because I thought Mortimer was going to marry Dina and they were going to live happily ever after, at least until he died. But that's not going to happen. So Nina here, she's flirty, no sense of humor, a great kisser. She's neat and she's athletic. And of course, she's working in the sports career. So that's going to suit her very perfectly. She's already tired from work. She's going right to sleep, but she's in a good place for a promotion it seems and if we look at her lifetime wish it's heartbreaker so we want to get her to be with as many sims as possible because she needs to have 10 boyfriends before her life is over well i guess that does it for setting up the calientes if there's no marriages there's nothing really to sort out so why don't we move on to the pleasants so here we are at the Broke trailer. This is probably my favorite Pleasant View family. I don't know. I don't like to say favorite because I love the Goths and I love the Calientes as well. But I do really enjoy playing 
Miss Brandy. Her husband recently died in a pool ladder accident over here. So it's just her and her two boys. Well, for now. And it's kind of a fun household to play because it's a little bit more difficult. No matter which game you're playing, more kids and less adults is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. So why don't we go over all of their personalities while they kind of get some sleep? <laughs> Brandy's going into Dustin's bed and Dustin's in Brandy's bed. This is a common problem. I guess we're going to have to set things up. So Brandy here, who is fast asleep, she has a good sense of humor. She is handy. She is family oriented, a heavy sleeper and friendly. And of course, her lifetime wish is also just like Cassandra to be surrounded by family. Now, good news is she already has two and a half kids going on. So she's kind of halfway there already. We just have to find someone maybe for her to marry or at least a way for her to have more more kids. I wouldn't give her any adopted kids because she doesn't have a lot of money or space for it. Next up is Dustin Broke. He is a teenager, so he doesn't have his lifetime wish just yet. We can choose it for him, or maybe he'll come up with it on his own. So he is a daredevil, a kleptomaniac, ambitious, and lucky. So, so far he's got some pretty good traits. I think he could use maybe the lazy trait as well, but it kind of conflicts with ambitious because... I think there's a lot of people who kind of want things to happen, but they never do anything to actually, you know, fulfill their dreams. And Dustin Broke kind of gives me that vibe. And as for little Bo Broke, oh, we can see the little flowers here. They're just clipping in a little bit of an oversight, but that's fine. Bo Broke, he is a virtuoso. And as we can see, he's already playing his xylophone and he's also a genius. So he's like this like child prodigy in this trailer trash home. It literally reminds me of myself. So I love Bo Broke. I always play Bo Broke and I always kind of follow his family. Like he's how I extend the Broke family usually. Dustin usually gets in some trouble. The new baby sometimes it gets taken away to be honest but Bo Bo is like my prodigal son Dustin woke up first at six in the morning and he autonomously went to go do his homework at the kitchen table so maybe he's not as lazy as I thought it's kind of also good that they don't come with all their traits when they're younger because as we play him we can kind of see what he's like in this game and we can give him something very appropriate but looking at his wants he wants to learn to drive and I think we're gonna have to own a car for that and that's not something Brandy can really afford right now but maybe Dustin will be getting a part-time job or something to sort that out. Brandy, she wants to get married. She wants to become friends with someone and she wants to buy a stroller. Simmers, we love stuff like that. Like I just got goosebumps from that. Like they can, some of them want to go to Egypt. Some of them want to become famous. And those are things I want to do in my real life. But this is the thing that I like to play the Sims for, because it's not something I would do in my real personal life. Like get, get married and have babies. Not for me, but definitely for me in the Sims. Oh, unfortunately, he didn't have time to finish his homework because the school bus is already here. But you know what? Doing half of it, that's better than what I expected from him. So good for you, Dustin. Brandy is going to have to get up even though she's not fully rested because Bo is going to need some food. And I think her baby bump should be showing up at any time now. Here's a tip. When you're first getting started, I always like to buy a lot of apples because fruit can make cereal. It can make peanut butter and jam sandwiches. It can make all sorts of things that your Sims can just grab quickly. And I like to grab cheese and lettuce as well because they're not too expensive and they give us uh, ingredients for the macaroni and cheese recipe and also for the autumn salad which are both very easy to make sims of all cooking skills can make them properly and then that way the whole family is going to have something to eat while we get our skills up so i'm going to have brandy make an autumn salad for the family it's something that she's not going to burn the house down when she makes either i don't think she has any cooking skills yet why don't we have a look oh she has a cooking skill level eight already well well done attention to detail i just cannot believe it okay Bo will not shut up so what is dustin doing he's well he's stopping to do his homework that's that's what he's doing and he's gonna attend to Bo's because somebody has to so dustin rolled the want to talk to Bo, but Bo can't talk yet so i had him teach Bo to talk at least halfway but he's got to stop that because he has to go to his part-time job right now he is a produce quality assessor so he works at the grocery store i think that's perfect i think that i think that job is going to suit him really well it's going to teach him some responsibility and teach him about money and you know things that hopefully he'll learn a little bit more of than his family now normally in a sims 2 playthrough i would absolutely play through until the baby was born but in this case since we have an open world brandy's pregnancy can continue as we finish off the other sims so why don't we jump over to the pleasants 
So here we are at the Pleasant House. It's the mid-afternoon, so the girls are home from school, and Mary Sue's home from work. Daniel is still at work, unfortunately, so we can't have him have sex with the maid. But I just like to kind of get them kind of set up and situated. The girls are in the middle of their teenage lifespan, so they're already in high school. But Lilith here, she wants to get a part-time job. Angela wants to learn a new recipe. And of course, Mary Sue wants to join a new career, so there's lots of stuff going on. But let's just go through their personalities first. So Mary Sue, as we know, is a workaholic, a perfectionist, frugal, charismatic, and ambitious. So she is definitely like a career driven sim. She wants to have a great family, great job, lots of money. Oh, and she wants to make the world a better place. So good luck with all that. Daniel Pleasant, he wants to be a superstar athlete. Now, unfortunately, even though he's not like a full on romance sim, he's still flirty and sometimes it gets him into a little bit of trouble. But in this game, he's brave, hydrophobic, athletic, and lucky as well. So there can be more to his storyline than just having an affair. Angela, the good and loved twin, she's a party animal, charismatic, athletic, and friendly. She always wants to be popular in the old game. So when she gets her lifetime reward, I usually give her the super popular lifetime wish, but we'll see what happens because sometimes they act a little bit differently. Now, for some reason, Lilith Pleasant, the unloved sister, is all the way over here at the bookstore. And she's not even a bookworm. She's over emotional, a slob, party animal, and dislikes children. She also also doesn't have her lifetime wish yet. Now we may as well get started on the grocery shopping and since Lilith is literally next door to the grocery store we're just gonna have her go in there and shop for some groceries. Now for some reason Mary Sue wants to join the architectural career maybe having a midlife crisis, learn painting skill and she just lost a want with Lilith because she's not loved. Oh my god that's so funny. Wow. Angela is being a good girl and just doing her homework right away. Lilith is being good in a different way. Oh my goodness she just rolled a lifetime wish. She rolled golden tongue and golden fingers to master the charisma skill and the guitar skill. I do see her as a bit of a rocker. And although she's sitting over here doing her homework, usually she's a bit of a badass. So I think I, I don't usually lock these in for teens and especially not right away, but this suits Lilith. So I'm, I am going to make it her lifetime wish just so that way she has something to work towards, you know, while we're not playing this family, because this is not my favorite family to play. They're a little bit drab, a little bit boring. My favorite thing is the Langerak affair, and that's not really happening. So why don't we just finish off and we'll get the Dreamer household set up. And lastly, we have the Dreamer house here with Darren and Dirk hopefully inside. It's getting kind of late. So Darren is, of course, he is a dreamer, but things have not really gone according to his wishes so far. He usually has a lot of unpaid bills. He doesn't have very much progress in his career. He wants to be like a painter and an artist, and like a free spirit kind of guy. And his son, Dirk, where is Dirk? Oh my God, he's all the way over here. Who is he visiting? Oh, he's doing his homework with Lilith Pleasant. I think that's great. I'm going to have them just chat a little bit just because they're here at the same place just to kind of get things going. I kind of like the idea of them at least being friends. I think they have a lot in common. I think they would be like outcast together at school. Nobody understands me. You know, the Sims 3 generations basically for teenagers. It's almost midnight. I'm sure he has a curfew, so I don't think it's appropriate for him to be staying out that late. And it's kind of too late to be going to the grocery store as well. But why don't we take a look at his personality? He is a vehicle enthusiast. He's handy, he's frugal, and he's ambitious. So he's definitely likes cars. He's gonna have to straighten up and fly right if he wants to start affording cars because with 487 simoleons, Darren's certainly not gonna buy it for him. Darren, on the other hand, he's a loner, loves the outdoors, a perfectionist, never nude, and artistic. So he has a lot going for him. He definitely has the skills and the personality to succeed in life, he just may have not made all the best decisions up until this point. What I like to do with Darren to get started is just like in The Sims 2, I just like to get him to start painting, getting his painting skill up and making a little bit of money so that way he can actually start to afford some things that his family's going to need. The other thing is that he's just rolled the want to join the architectural design career and I think that really suits him. I recently just installed The Sims 3 Ambitions, so I'm excited to try out that career as well, especially since my favorite thing is ripping on builds. I'd love to be able to redesign them, but with this save file, I kind of don't want to touch it because it's, you know, it's kind of 
in its perfect state, like exactly a copy of The Sims 2 world. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. We'll have to see if he continues to roll that wand or if he kind of sticks with it, because so far he hasn't really stuck with anything. So the last thing I want to mention about the Dreamers is that Darren actually has Dawn as his enemy, and I think that's because he married Cassandra there. Because as we know, Darren and Cassandra have a thing for each other. They're friends and just crushes, but maybe we'll see if that evolves, because maybe her commitment to Dawn will wane as she discovers his commitment to her has never existed. Well, that about does it for our first episode. We got everything set up. Our mods are ready to go. Our households are ready to go. We might have to do a name change or two at City Hall to sort out after the marriage. But other than that, I think we're ready to just get into regular gameplay. So that about does it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below because this is definitely a series that I can continue. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Boom. Bye.